Hey you guys, I'm back and I'm here to talk about drunk wiring and problems that you, you who have found this video, may be having with your Fox body. You guys probably think that the factory radio is bad, sounds bad, but 9 out of 10 I'm willing to bet it's because your radio is not wired right. And why do I say that? Well, as any installer does before they get anything put inside the vehicle, they test things. Test, test, test. So that way when everything's put back together, it works. Because nothing's worse than getting to that part, putting everything back together, and suddenly nothing works. So let's go in the vehicle and I'm going to show you where things are wrong in my Fox body. So... You are ready to power up your sound system and it sounds like boo-boo. Well, the reason it sounds so bad is because from the factory, these pins were not right. I actually had to repin my entire pinning because the orientation did not match the aftermarket orientation, which is funny because the aftermarket orientation matches the radio's orientation perfectly. The pins on the back of the factory radio, this is the correct way that it's supposed to be in sequence. It's supposed to be front left, or let's call this correct, driver's front positive, driver's front negative, rear left positive, rear, left, negative, front, right, positive, front, right, negative, back, right, positive, back, right, negative. That's the correct sequence that the radio transmits to the speakers. But what do you do when your speakers are not transmitting correctly? And it's an easy mistake because at the time, in the 90s, I guarantee you, they were drunk when they were assembling these cars because my pins were wrong. When I originally checked my pins, this is not the colors that they were. This was the situation that I ran into. And as you guys can clearly see, right there, it sticks out like a sore thumb, front left positive, front right negative. That should have been front left negative. So my front speakers, the negatives were off. So that means that they always sounded bad. And that's why the previous installer completely bypassed them. He went straight to just wiring to the up here to these speakers and to the rear speakers. He completely ignored the fact that, hey, there could be a problem with the front door speakers and he didn't want to take the time to figure it out. So I'm going to show you guys how to take the time and figure out where do all of these colors go to? How do you know if you have this problem? Because putting in a double din and being a boomer is not going to fix your problem. You guys have to admit first and foremost if you have a Fox body you have a problem. For one you're going to spend too much money on aftermarket parts and for two, the honest Fox Body YouTubers, like Gearhead704, actually came out and said that the speakers were wired incorrect. But he blamed it on the aftermarket harness, which is wrong. The aftermarket harness is right. Matt. Matt 2.0, the guy that runs the shop. This is what was wrong. Ford had some drunk ass installers. So, how do you guys repin and how do you test? First, let's teach how to test. So the way that you guys want to test is get yourself a multimeter. Any multimeter will do. You don't need something expensive like this one. This one's actually mid-range. Now go ahead and move it to continuity. That's that button right there. And while I'm teaching you guys multimeters, that is battery. This one is your house electricity, alternating current. So when you guys want to test your batteries, go to this side. 
But back to continuity. It's the one right there with the little audio symbol. Now what does that mean? Well, if you take your prongs, pull the caps off, and your prongs touch, it beeps like as if I cursed. Like, you son of a... You dirty ass. How dare you be like that? So this test continuity. It's basically saying that you've completed the circuit. The wire is intact. This is a good way to test whether or not a wire is broken. You put one at one end and you put the other at the other end and it will beep if the wire is good. It won't make a sound if the wire is broken. So how do we test? So let's go up here to the factory. The factory harness. Now mine has already been fixed, so I don't have this problem. But you guys may. We're going to go ahead and insert either or. You can put red here, you can put black here, it doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and randomly pick one. Let's pick this guy right there. So we have to figure out where is that speaker. So what you want to do is work your way around the vehicle and test the speaker connections till you find out which one beeps. So now we're going to go all the way over to that side of the car to the back or we would work our way over to this side but let's go ahead and work our way to the back. So we're going back here. Oh man this nice new washed carpet smells so good. And I'm going to flip these little speakers over because these are my testing speakers. Oh, it's beeping. What does that mean? So if we come over here and I stick it here, so that pink wire, what that means is that pink wire is in reality that blue wire with a very faint pink stripe. Now you guys tell me there is no faint pink stripe on that wire. So this is a great way to tell you guys which one of those wires go where. It's a really, really important test too, because you may, and you probably do, due to Ford's drunken behavior in the 90s, your pins were wrong from the factory. Matt 2.0, I'm looking at you, Matt. So, it's very easy to fix. Let me show you guys how to fix. Show you guys how to repin the pins. Let's take the factory harness. This is a factory harness cut from a Ford Ranger. They're all the same car, all the exact same radio. So we want to take this plastic shielding off on the perimeter. You don't need any tools for that. You could actually just grab it and lift it off like this. And that lifts the shielding off. Now we need to take the red guard out. To take the red guard out, you're going to push here push out like that, go to the other side, push here, push out like that, and give it a tug. Look at that. Now you can add all your pins and they're all loosey-goosey, but they're not. They're being held in by a little piece of plastic right there. Or it's easier to push it in from the back side. So let's say we want to move this pin, this black one. We're going to touch on the bottom like that, and as we're touching, we're going to pull back with our other finger. And then you see, just like that, the pin is out. So now, so now we're going to try and take out another pin. Let's choose this pin over here. So same procedure, press down, pull back, and look at that, the pin's out. Now to get your pin back in, all you got to do is just push it in. You're going to hear a satisfying click. And if you don't hear a satisfying click, it's because you press too hard on your plastic. And then you just give your plastic a push back, just like that. So let's go ahead make sure that this plastic is pushed back before I push this one in. There we go. So now if I push this in, we'll get a satisfying click. There's the click. And then you're gonna go ahead, 
reassemble your whole thing. And then don't forget to put your shield on. The other way. And just like that, you have repinned your wires. And now your wires should match the correct orientation. The aftermarket orientation is the correct orientation. Matt! I don't think Matt's going to sell me any more Fox body parts. So, just in case you guys want to know, now is when you want to freeze your screen and actually freeze your screen right there because that's the coloring. This is the correct firing sequence and where the speakers go. This, my pin number two and pin number six were switched around. So if you switch them around, these are the correct colors, how they should be going. And that's it guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that quick video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. I greatly appreciate that. Lord knows I need the views. I'm going broke here, people. I'm going broke. And just in case you guys want to know where did the pins go, there they are right there. That's for a 1990 Mustang GT convertible. There's all the configurations from the factory, how mine was pinned. Yours may or may not be different. Get out there and test it. See you guys next time. If you guys like this content, if you guys like learning things like this, subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you as part of the community. And if you guys really want to do me a huge favor, share this video so I can get more than 100 views. I'm going broke. Going broke, guys. Don't know how I'm going to do it. The only thing I can think about is lighting the car on fire. Take care, guys.